Wind, hail, lightning, even an isolated tornado risk. All a possibility late this evening and tonight. Enough so our certified most accurate weather team has declared this evening a first alert weather day. This is WMBF News at 5 o'clock. We're glad you're with us. I'm Eric Weisfeld. And I'm Rachel Bogle. We want to get right over now to Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold to break down the severe weather threats and most importantly, when we'll see those storms moving in. Well, we start off with breaking news tonight. Multiple sources telling us new information is expected to be released soon regarding the case of Brittany Drexel, a teenager who disappeared in Myrtle Beach more than a decade ago. We are keeping you updated on breaking news in the Brittany Drexel case. WMBF News was inside the courtroom sharing the moment Raymond Moody confessed. We have live team coverage of how this case has impacted the entire community. It was quite the spectacle in downtown Myrtle Beach this weekend, and it was all captured on video. Right now, we're working to learn more about the incident on Ocean Boulevard involving police and a Dodge Charger that since racked up about a million views on TikTok. Well, that now viral video shows a car driving the wrong way with police chasing on foot and officers eventually taking two people into custody. WMBF News reporter Eric Richards spoke with the man who posted that video. Joins us now with what we do know. Breaking news for you now, a Grand Strand police officer is in jail tonight. Horry County police officer Quintard Tucker is accused of assault, burglary, and domestic violence. Warrants claim Tucker went into a motel room last night without permission and allegedly punched someone in the head repeatedly. SLED says this happened at the Compass Cove Resort. Those warrants also claim Tucker pushed someone to the ground in the parking lot. A judge has not set Tucker's bond. We're working to learn if he still works for the police department. Tonight we are taking a closer look at domestic violence in our state and why it is not easy to hold those responsible accountable. And Rachel, last week you shared what law enforcement officials go through right after they get that 911 call. But really, that's just the first step. Exactly. And that brings us to where we are now, Eric. So when then Governor Nikki Haley signed the Domestic Violence Reform Act into law in 2015, it made crucial changes to our state's domestic violence code. The presidential hopeful and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is making her first campaign stop right here in the Grand Strand. We have live team coverage of this event. It begins right now at Ori Georgetown Technical College's Myrtle Beach campus. Quite a crowd there, mm -hmm. too. We're going to start off with WMBF News reporter Eric Richards. So, Eric, what can we expect to hear from Haley tonight? Midterm elections just weeks away now, and candidates are making their last-minute pitches to you voters. And aiding in those efforts, money and lots of it. D.C. Bureau reporter Peter Zampa spoke with those responsible for the influx of cash in our elections. Well, breaking news out of New York, Donald Trump's lawyer says he's been told the former president has been indicted on charges involving payments made during the 2016 presidential campaign to silence claims of an extramarital sexual encounter. And this would make Trump the first former U.S. president charged with a crime. The New York grand jury had been weighing possible criminal charges against former President Trump over the alleged hush money payments to adult film actress Stormy Daniels. Tonight we're learning more about the shooter and the weapons used in yesterday's deadly shooting at an elementary school in Nashville, Tennessee. Metro police say 28-year-old Audrey Hale was heavily armed with three guns. Two of them were assault-style weapons. Earlier today, the police chief revealed Hale was under a doctor's care for an emotional disorder. Investigators say Hale bought seven firearms legally in recent years. Reports show when Hale left home yesterday, they were carrying a red bag. Police say when Hale's mother asked about it, she was dismissed. And tonight, we are piecing together how a once smiling Nashville teenager became a mass shooter. Southwest Airlines is still operating at an historic low, canceling another 2,500 flights today. This has been such a headache for oh. people. This, of course, caps off a week of massive cancellations for the airline, with questions remaining over how long it takes Southwest to return to normal operations. Good afternoon to you, Eric Weisfeld here, alongside my co anchor Rachel Bogle. As we continue our team coverage here, we are really starting to see things ramp up. Yeah, absolutely. As we just saw there with Ian preparing to move the vehicle because that water is rising so quickly there in Atlanta. Avenue. Absolutely. Sometimes it's too late for that, so that's why we ask you to move those vehicles ahead of time. Right? That's absolutely right. All right, now we want to get right over to Ali Espinosa in Myrtle Beach. She's right near Sea Captain's house. Now, Ali, what are you seeing there? 
Fire crews are on their way to another building whose roof may have blown off. We also have a crew right now on their way to the gazebo inn. We're going to try and get a look and see exactly what is going on there as soon as we can. We're going to bring that to you again as soon as those reporters arrive there and we can get a better look. Right now, I believe we are going driving in the Myrtle Beach area near the airport. This is on Highway 17. You can see right there some of the familiar hotels. There's the Atlantic Hotel, I believe. Ian Klein is behind the wheel here, and you can see a little bit of water on the roads. Not a bad thing there, but we are told from emergency officials they would like you to stay off until these storm remnants are over. Right, yeah, you know, you don't want to tempt it. You no. know, Why? even a lot of these power workers that we've been talking about have come here to help. They have to wait until some of those winds die down for power to be restored, too. So they're all trying to take precautions as well. Here, this is a live look for you. Now you can see the water is just gushing right through where that pier, at least the center portion of that pier, used, used to be. be. I'm sure many people have often walked with their families to oh, yeah. the end of that pier before. So you know um, how low that water normally is, right? right. Certainly, yes, yeah, certainly a very different view today as we are really seeing the power of Ian now, now that he has reached our shores. Now that Ian, for the most part, is out of our area, the Georgetown County Emergency Operations Center will soon move to OpCon 2. So that's an enhanced awareness as the focus now moves to recovery. That's right. And if you were here with us earlier, we were live on the air when we told you Ian made landfall in Georgetown County around 2 this afternoon. I believe the precise time was 2.05 this afternoon. Noon, and we're going to keep you updated as that recovery process continues. Hey there, this is WMBF News at 530. I'm Rachel Bogle. I'm Eric Weiswell. We are glad you're with us on this Friday. Friday. Woo! Oh, that's How can you news. ever forget it's Friday? It's the best day of the week. That's the good news. <laughs> you ready for a cold night ahead? How about an even colder weekend? That's still not going to knock these Friday vibes. It's Friday. Though. If you're open for some snow here, though, the chances they are slim, but there actually are a few places not far away seeing plenty of it. That includes Beach Mountain, North Carolina. Here's a live look at look at that conditions there through the resortcams.com. They are loving it there, I bet. Cars, buildings, roads, everything covered in snow, and skiers, of course, they are happy about it. Let's go ahead and bring in Chief Meteorologist Jamie Arnold. Jamie, nothing like a good old winter wonderland at Beach. Mountain, I know you're a snow lover. Yeah, you know, I thought long and hard about calling in sick. Right? I could see that. If someone offered to pay for your dream vacation to anywhere in the world for two weeks, talking all expenses paid, nothing out of your pocket, where would you go? I think I'd go right to Europe so that I could just mm -hmm. hop. Oh, yeah. That's a all good idea. around. For two weeks? No surprise here, Italy. Italy. I have marinara sauce running through my veins. <laughs> And see, those sound great, but they sound exhausting. You're going to Iceland, y'all know, you know, know what I want to do. You want to get me my little cabin, way up in the mountains, with tons of snow, in the middle of nowhere, and just I just need to sit. Well, you do I, listen, I can do that on the Dude. island of Capri in Italy just fine. All right, you're gonna want to check this out, right? Meow. Mm. Cat weighing more than 40 pounds will soon have a new home. That's a thick boy. <laughs> Patch has arrived at <laughs> Richmond Animal Care and Control in Central Virginia, Wayne. You're right, thick, a whopping 42 <laughs> pounds. He has his new family. He's already lost a few pounds in their care, going on a special diet and exercise plan. So he's on his road That's to like a tiger. getting slim it's and not a cat anymore. 42 You know, but pounds. sometimes I blame the parents. <laughs> No Let, table food. Thick boys need love too, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well, fortunately, Patches has a new home and on a little uh, diet, so slimming down and you're going to need a big diet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we hope you'll take some time today and make sure you're giving your baby some love. And here's our baby. You know, we're giving love yeah. to our babies. Who, who do we have here? So we have, this is Callie. This little one right here is Nala. Her birthday's tomorrow. Too, it so is. She needed her day in the sun. And this is Beatrice, and they're all friends. <laughs> the company surveyed 500 Americans and found only about a quarter of people actually preferred pumpkin spice over other flavors. Yeah, everyone else is wrong. But anyway, <laughs> I can say they've had at least one argument with a friend or family member or coworker about pumpkin spice. Look who's in the minority. 11% say <laughs> they Whatever. consider, now get this, breaking up with their partner over differing pumpkin spice opinions. I think we'd have a lot of well, divorces. That's, that's a little much. Yeah, that's yeah. a bit much. That if you're not bit. right, you got you to <laughs> start arguing. <laughs> you got to get right or you get left, okay? Right. Or you get lost, I guess. <laughs> We're also asking, what do you think? We have this posted over on our Facebook. You can go share your opinion right now on our Facebook. Because we want to hear it. Now I need to know who issue, I right? need to block.
<laughs> yes, majority rules here. Yeah. I don't even know these people. Thank you for coming to my show. It's really been <laughs> from all of us, mostly pumpkin spice, not so much lovers. Most of us are going to be at the parade tomorrow morning. We'd love here, to I see you. I feel bad that Ellie's so short. Let me get down here. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Have a good night.